Well, as you probably know, the U.S. Postal Service has been very kind to Amazon deliveries, but that could soon change. A task force that was set up by President Trump has suggested letting the money-losing post office charge Amazon and other online retailers a lot more for deliveries. Christina Partsinevelos has the story. Hi, Christina. Hi, David. So the task force was set in place to stop the bleeding from the postal servers. They've posted losses for the past 12 years. So some of the major points in this proposal, the first one focusing on the fact that they're suggesting that the postal service should increase prices and pretty much put a uh, markups for anything not deemed essential. So think uh, tax notices are essential or prescription drugs are essential. The second thing they said to focus on was to cut costs. And that means compensation, get rid of uh, collective bargaining. And then they didn't say anything about removing retirement obligations, and that is what seeps out so much of that cash from the Postal Service. And then last but not least, the Board of Governors right now, they're suggesting that the Board of Governors needs to get more involved when it comes to negotiating these deals with the likes of Amazon. We know the president has been very vocal about Amazon, saying that the Postal Service has become Amazon's delivery boy. And that they're providing too much service, giving too many discounts to Amazon. However, others like economists, analysts like Cowan and Co. are saying Amazon's going to turn elsewhere. They're going to go to the competition like UPS or FedEx. I had one viewer that was watching earlier on in, in the day, and he said in his local, uh, in his town, there's an Amazon warehouse, and Amazon itself already delivers to his front door. So you have these. Proposals going forward, not necessarily full privatization, but definitely asking the Postal Service to act more like a company. <laughs> what a novel idea, Christina. Right, thank you. <laughs> so, panels, should we taxpayers be happy that Amazon's kind of joyride from the post office may be coming to an end? I don't know if it's a joy. Well, I, you know, I, I, I definitely think so. I think that uh, they, you know, as Christina alluded to, they should move closer and closer to a private model. I'd like to see them privatize the Postal Service. And to that end, Christina, two other things. I wondered if they were in the proposal that I know actually the Postal Service wanted. They wanted to do start doing Sunday deliveries and they wanted the ability to close unproductive branches, mm -hmm. which keep getting stopped by because they're in some congressman's district. Did that come up? Yeah, they actually talked about other avenues. So talking about real estate, they not that I have anything I saw about closing the uh, or reopening Sundays, because if anything, like today, today is acting like a Sunday because it's a day, national mm. day of mourning, but they're still delivering Amazon packages today, which did get a lot of people upset about that as well. Yeah, the USPS was created in 1788. So <clears throat> to Gary's point, we needed it back then. You know, we, we, we needed a postal mm -hmm. system backed by the government, horse and buggy, to deliver from one state to across the country. They couldn't ever foresee all of the Internet technology we have nowadays. And the Postal Service, from my understanding, makes most of the revenue from letters, postcards, in the mail. Nobody writes letters anymore. Everybody pays their bills online. And so it, it, they really haven't been able to adapt to uh, changing times. And I think that's why... $4 billion worth of losses for fiscal year uh, last year, and it's going to continue well, unless they do. Heather, I, the world, okay, they don't have a Pony Express anymore, but the world <laughs> hasn't totally, I mean, at the end of the day, there's a lot of people living in rural areas, and the post office is providing a money-losing service, just like the phone companies are providing by, by decree a money-losing phone service, still an internet service, because you can't, FedEx is never going to open up a branch in small town America because there's not enough package volume there. It would be a money loser, and that's why UPS and FedEx make money. But those residents need a post office there. So the question is, is who's going to subsidize those losses? Unfortunately, UPS is the rest of their business is so not competitive with UPS or FedEx in quality that they have to charge a discount in order to get the business of Amazon. So the real issue is how does the government engineer this to let them raise their prices and not have the business go to FedEx and UPS? That's the fine balance we've got to get to keep the local post offices open in some towns. I think that's right. But the answer that, that does not mean this could not be a privatized organization that has right. a mandate exactly. that it has to maintain service in those underserved, talk, uh, expensive places yeah. you're talking about about remote areas, rural areas, et cetera. But to have taxpayers on the hook, 
uh, because of mismanagement, Liz, because of past just obligations, be, we, et cetera. The post office, just to be clear, like your, a phone in a rural town that's on is not the government, right? It's provided by Verizon or something. I know, but, that's what I'm saying. But it, who's paying for those losses they take? My, my parents grew up in a place where they had 10 phone right. pole, telephone poles going to their house. Now, that power company is a private, publicly traded company, loses sure. money every day serving that house, and that phone company right. loses money every day. It's being sure. subsidized by the other customers yes. and the free market. But, that's the angle but, it has to yes, be Yes, but, Jonas, we're, we're but, subsidized. But Jonas, you're, taxpayers you're right now are subsidizing not only those services which everyone deems essential and are essential, we're also subsidizing bad management. And that is, I think, where I, I am totally on board with some kind of massive change in the way this thing's been run. Privatized. It has been proposed any number of times, but basically you can't get the unions on board. With By the way, for the unions, the unions are the elephant That's in exactly the room. Right. There's a $43 billion unpaid bill to the union pension yeah. fund. Uh, that's well, one thing. If it is privatized, who's going to buy it with that $43 billion hanging over? I, I'd also head? just like to highlight that the average, there's more UPS trucker workers that are millionaires than postal workers. So it's not like cost cutting well, is the problem. Like they have a serious management problem. In fact, the fact that managers can't make more money is one of the problems that's not competitive. All right, we got to move on, gang.